What up guys? So we're already back from the trip to Shenzhen. We're here in Shanghai. And I've got these two devices that we use to photograph the strongman competition. And just to be clear, our channel at Greater China Tech is about making video content. So we're gonna be focusing mostly on the video recording features of these two devices to figure out which is the best tool for content creators like us or content creators like yourselves. So before we look at the footage, let's talk about statistics. I'm gonna put those up on screen now. And when you look at the statistics list, the first thing you're noticing is that the prices are almost the same. So it used to be true that the iPhone was a lot more expensive than the OnePlus devices, but over time, the prices of OnePlus phones have crept up steadily. And actually now there's only about a $30 difference in pricing between the two devices. So let's first talk about the selfie camera on these devices. The OnePlus has a better statistic on paper with a 16 megapixel sensor whereas the iPhone only has a 12 megapixel sensor. So in terms of just the raw statistics, the OnePlus seems to have an advantage. When it comes to the iPhone footage that we'll show here, you're gonna get a wider field of view. So it looks like a slightly wider angle lens, even though it's a lower megapixel sensor, which is useful if you wanna capture, for instance, shot of you and friends, or shots that capture a bit more of your surroundings. However, when we look at the footage from the OnePlus camera, you're getting a more narrow field of view. So it seems like a little bit of a longer lens. You can't capture as much of your surroundings, and you're gonna get a bit of a tighter shot of your own face, which you may or may not like, depending on what your face looks like. So each camera has a distinct advantage, uh, but if you wanna capture more of your surroundings, the iPhone might be a better choice. Now let's talk about the lenses. So as we mentioned, the iPhone has three lenses on the back of the device, the three that you'll see here, as well as a flash. The OnePlus actually has four. So besides the Hasselblad logo you'll see here, there's actually four different lenses that each have their own specific function. So there's sort of a normal everyday use lens, there's a telephoto lens, there's also a wide angle lens, and finally there's a black and white lens. So there's actually four different lenses on the back of the device. But how do these various lenses perform in practice? So let's take a little bit of a look at the footage from the Strongman contest and see which device captured a better image. So first we're gonna look at footage from the primary lens, telephoto lens, and wide angle lens of these two cameras and analyze the differences between the two. When you first look at the footage from the OnePlus devices, one of the first things you'll see is that the colors are a lot more vibrant. So if you're taking footage from the OnePlus phone and bringing it directly into an editing program and then taking that edited file and posting it to the internet without a lot of post-processing, you might be happier with the results from the OnePlus. Now, looking at the same action in the footage that I recorded on the iPhone, uh, you're noticing the image is a lot less dynamic. However, if you look deep into the various areas of the frame where the light isn't as good, there does still seem to be a lot of color information that's preserved. So I would say the iPhone is seemingly capturing uh, a really high quality image, but it doesn't look quite as good coming directly out of the camera. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the wide angle lens on these two devices. And we're starting out by looking at footage from the OnePlus. Uh, the footage we're getting from the OnePlus, it's very bright, it's very vibrant. Looking at the iPhone image, we're getting something that looks, number one, a lot darker. And as we sort of comb through and look at the footage, the colors themselves don't appear as bright as well. So it seems like the cameras have a little bit of a different mode when it comes to the way they process colors uh, and render how they appear on screen. So you're getting a wider field of view with a wide angle lens on the iPhone. It just gives you a bit more possibilities when you're out in the field shooting different types of scenes. Uh, and potentially giving you a more interesting look, but it's a small difference. But besides the lenses, I also wanna talk about the various frame rates that are available on these two devices. We recorded another clip of people doing a log press at the Strongman competition that we wanna look at now. One of the first and most interesting things you guys will see is that because the frame rate is so high, you can actually see the flickering of the LED lights around the participant uh, flickering in the footage. So to the naked eye, I was there on set at this location and I couldn't even perceive that there was a flickering of the lights, but because of the very, very, very high speed of this camera, uh, you're able to see that. So that's pretty cool. The second thing you'll see is that the footage, even though it is this very high 480 frame per second frame rate, uh, it's been downscaled to 720p. So you are getting a very high frame rate and a lot of color information, it looks quite good but it is getting crunched down to 720 uh, in terms of the aspect ratio and the resolution. So you don't have a lot of resolution to play with. If you wanna show this, for instance, in a big screen, it's still gonna be pretty compromised in terms of the footage quality. How does this compare to the iPhone? Let's take a look. So the iPhone slow motion feature only gets you to 240 frames per second. But in terms of the footage itself, uh, the quality does seem to be a little bit better. 
You still see the same flickering of lights. Of course, this is only 240 frames per second as opposed to 480 frames per second on the OnePlus. But if you look very carefully and think about the things, for instance, about the colors that are captured on people's faces, about the difference between darkness and light, I would argue that the footage quality you're getting in this very high frame rate resolution mode is probably marginally better coming out of the iPhone. However, the fact that you're able to get uh, 480 frames per second on the OnePlus is unique. And if you're thinking about applications, for instance, like sports photography or action photography, you'd be able to capture footage on the OnePlus that simply wouldn't be possible on the iPhone. One other key facet for vloggers when it comes to the performance of these two cameras is about stabilization. The iPhone performs slightly better when it comes to stabilization if you're looking at footage coming directly out of the device. However, there are a lot of software programs like Adobe Premiere that have stabilization built in. So if you post-process the footage, you can still get quite a high quality result from the OnePlus device. So after playing with these two devices for more than a week, what's my perspective as a content creator? I've been playing with Apple devices since I was a kid and I've always enjoyed them, but I was extremely impressed by OnePlus and what they've been able to do with the price they're releasing, this form factor for this price. Basically, for all the different features I discussed, there's distinct advantages and disadvantages between the two. But OnePlus is offering a very compelling high quality device for content creators. As a headline, I'm extremely impressed with the way that OnePlus has been able to generate such a high quality device after only nine iterations of cell phone technology. They've managed to create something that really can go toe to toe with the iPhone, a company with a much longer history in a very short amount of time. The OnePlus 9 Pro also has several features the iPhone simply doesn't, such as 480 frames per second video, as well as 8K video recording features. So. OnePlus has managed to pack in features the iPhone simply doesn't even have. So my recommendation is this. If you're a filmmaker who's planning to take footage that you bring into your computer or into editing software and tweak and change and color grade, the iPhone is probably gonna give you a slightly higher quality result for those specific instances. However, the OnePlus is a device that's gonna give you a great high quality set of clips straight out of the device. And it's important to know the OnePlus has also recently added support for raw video recording. So if you want to get even higher quality video files, OnePlus has a solution for you. Overall though, I'm very impressed with what OnePlus has been able to do with this device. And like Kessie Nestat famously said in one of his videos, the best device for making content for any individual creator is the one you have. Either one of these two devices is offering a great solution for aspiring content creators. And I would highly encourage you to take a hard look at the OnePlus 9 Pro if you're interested in making content yourself. This is Jim Fields from Greater China Tech. Thank you for watching.